Hey everybody, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How are all of you? I see all these smiley faces, everybody having a good time today. Well, if you're not, if you had a rotten day, this is the place to come for some light love and levity and our famous levity, putting smiles on your faces. That's what we do with our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. And guess what? We are still celebrating a one-year anniversary. We hit one year of daily live episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series last week. And boy, do we have a very special show, a big anniversary show, celebratory show celebrating you, me, us, the guests, the international viewers, the local regional viewers, the loveities, everything to do with this show, which started one year ago this month, and we're going to celebrate it in style tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We're going to hear from a lot of uh, our past guests and some viewers as well, and we've been working hard. It's going to be a late night. I don't know. I can't guarantee what time we're going to be going to bed tonight. There's a lot of uh, production that we're still working on <laughs> for tomorrow's show. We're still getting last minute videos coming in from our guests who want to uh, say some nice things about the show and celebrate the anniversary and some of our viewers. Uh, so we're sort of squeezing the deadline a little bit to get it in there. Busy day. I was on the air on the radio shows with close-up radio all day today and then we had a lot of other things the car had to be inspected we had uh, a dental appointment we had to go to the bank we had to go to the drugstore we had uh, i was on the air all day and just it's one of those days where everything was stacked and then we had to get all the shows ready for this weekend a big weekend we have lisa kelly irish soprano who used to be with celtic woman joining us we have anita pointer from the pointer sisters joining us uh composer and pianist michael roberts is joining us this weekend uh amazing guest Didi o'malley a wonderful irish entertainer she's on this weekend as well seamus kelleher brilliant they call him the guitar man he's next monday and of course great guests throughout the week tonight Megan McDonough is on our show, brilliant award-winning singer, songwriter, actress, and also she has a new calling, a very inspirational and empowering calling uh, that she's incorporated into her life. It's going to be a really positive show today, so if you had a bad day, stick with us. We've got live music, we've got levity and levity, and of course, we have uh, surprises too. Poignant moments, all kinds of cool stuff. So it's an entertainment lifestyle talk show series. We started a year ago. We're going to celebrate it tomorrow. Over 400 plus episodes live for you here. We've done them on Facebook. Now we make the home uh, YouTube at Gym Masters TV. We welcome everybody. And we also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the incredible uh, exciting details uh, when we have pop-up shows. We post them on the YouTube channel. So the details are there when we have uh, on location, when we do host lovely chat viewer episodes, and we're planning some more of those coming up and uh, all of our amazing uh, guests from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, entertainment, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration. They come from everywhere, all walks of life, all levels of success not just top celebrities, but everyday people as well. Everybody is welcome to our show here. And uh, it's a blast having you here. So keep abreast of everything. 
Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. There's over 400 episodes you can binge watch of amazing conversations, levity, surprise, crazy moments, things that have happened live on the air, like uh, the picture going blurry when I'm talking or the guests falling out of a chair or, you know, anything can happen when you're live. <laughs> and we just roll with it. Good to see everybody. Let's check in with some of our Lovities all around the world. Lovities, what's that? Well, they're part of our Lovity squad. They are uh, viewers who've been watching for a long time. And if you are watching now, hey, does it matter? Male, female, uh, height, weight, income, political views, religious views, eye color, none of that matters. Everybody's welcome to join us here on the show. Again, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our content, our daily live episodes. It's amazing. I can't believe we've been doing this for one full year, over 400 episodes. Whew. It's been a lot of talking, but a lot of pleasure as well. And also give a like on this uh, video on YouTube. That really does help the show and help the channel. Subscribing does and click like if you enjoy this video on uh, YouTube and drop a comment there on not just in chat, but on the YouTube page that helps the show as well. All the algorithms and everything that they have, it does help. So hello, Lovities all around the world. Speaking of Lovities, how about Juanita? who's here from South Africa, as always. Hi, Jim and Lovity Squad. Good to see you, Juanita. Merlin is here reporting for duty from Ontario, Canada. Hi, Jim and all Lovities. Good to see you as well. Maureen, she just probably flew in the door from the hospital, and she says hello to everybody. We hope everybody is well. It's good to see you as well. Maureen, there in Arizona. And hello, Jim. Happy Tuesday. Boy, do I need my Lovity family today. Well, we are here, and nice to have you with us as well. Uh, rough day, you say, Maureen. Well, keep smiling. We're here to put some smiles on your face today on the Gym Master Show Live. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here with all the beautiful lovelies from Southern California. We got the West Coast uh, here for you as well. Good to see you as always, Anne. We love when you're here. You're all amazing. I think you're all amazing. And those of you as well, you know, we're talking about the folks who are commenting live, but we have a lot of people who watch who don't comment. They just watch. Some watch on the replay in the archives. So we welcome you as well. If you're watching later on, not when we're live, you're as valuable and as important as anybody that's watching live as well. You're viewing, you're enjoying, and we thank you very much as well. Because we realize not everybody can be here every single day because we do this show seven days a week. We may be adjusting some of that in the summertime. We do have to see family. We do want a vacation. <laughs> got to get to that ocean and start swimming at it, not just showing pictures of it, but I got to get into that ocean soon. Kathleen Walker says, hey, Jim, bring on the lovity. You had a rough day too? I had a stacked day. It was really one of those days where I said, okay, I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm in the car, so I'm going to get that done. I got to go over here, got to get it that. And then I had to be back to be on the air on the radio for multiple interviews and shows. So a great day. Uh, and then we've got a long night ahead producing the anniversary episode for tomorrow. Well, keep smiling, Kathleen. We're here for you. We're here for Anne in Jacksonville, Florida. Hello, Jim and everyone. I'm even losing my voice. I'm talking so much lately here. Let's see who else we have. We have so many people that are writing and saying hello. <clears throat> I'm all choked up about the anniversary coming up. See, you know what's nice? All of the Lovities talk to each other too. And I think that's so cool. And uh, you got care emojis from Merlin in Canada for everyone. Uh, I, I'm going to throw this in here. I know Juanita's just writing this for sure. Kathleen, you too. We definitely need a group hug. There you go. And some chocolate. If there's a way that I could do some chocolate. So some of you are having a rough day. Well, guess what? Megan is a very inspirational per, uh, person. You're gonna love this. Not just a great singer and songwriter and actress. She is in the inspirational world uh, pretty uh, indefinitely. And I think that's fantastic. And I, I dabble in that world too. Hello, Jim and Lovities. Welcome, Megan, to the show tonight. I've sent you my video for tomorrow. Great. Uh, it's not going through, so I will write you email later and try to work it out. Send it if you can by Dropbox or WeTransfer. If you have Dropbox or WeTransfer, they can handle larger files like MP4 files or movie files. So try to send it if you can by Dropbox or movie file to our email address uh, and we'll get that on. Again, our great guest is Megan McDonough. She's a brilliant singer and songwriter, actress. She has her guitar with her as well. And we're going to welcome her live right now. Megan, welcome to the show. It is oh awesome to have you here. 
Jim, I'm a huge new fan. I'm a, I'm a lovety. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Thank you so much for such a warm welcome. And gosh, I'm a little, you know, but I'm Irish. We, we have a ten tendency to uh -oh. do Oh, yes. Me, so am I. Irish on my father's mother's side. Yes. So slancha. Slancha. <laughs> so well, we, we shall toast yeah. in this very fancy martini glass. And, you, and, and doesn't doesn't this look very fancy and expensive? Yes, <laughs> it's it's water. <laughs> it's water. Nice cold chilled water. S stepping it up in the martini glass. Just uh, I haven't been drinking enough water uh, lately, and sometimes I get in that habit where I just get so busy I don't, and then I get very thirsty later in the evening. Yes, you know, energy can go down too. If you're right. Like Exactly. So earlier I had a cup of tea, you know, because I know that's good for your throat and everything. And the allergies are a little crazy this time of the year. But uh, hey, look at this. Uh, Merlin in Canada says, welcome, Megan. You are now a love of tea. I mean, you're going to get a, you're going to get a lot of you're going to get a lot of love here on the show. And that's what we're all about. And uh, <laughs> and Kathleen says, I sent my video by phone. Uh, only let me send a short one. If you have Dropbox or we transfer and those are free. You can send a, a longer one through that, uh, Kathleen. She's watching in New York City. Uh, Maureen says, standing ovation for our new Loverty, Megan. Welcome to the Loverty squad. Kathleen in New York says, welcome, Megan. Juanita in South Africa says, welcome to the show, Megan. And in Florida says, welcome, Megan, from Jacksonville, Florida. Anne says, welcome, Megan. Glad you're spending time with us. And she is in Southern California. So. Just a few of the many welcomes. Jen Barry in, Allent in the mountains of Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is her Zen place. She, I love the ocean. She loves the mountains. I bet she's going to ask you, right, Jen, what her Zen place is, the mountains, the ocean. Uh, I think the room you're in right now looks pretty Zen to me. Thank you. Yes. And, you know, I'm up here in Minnesota where everybody and everything is so nice, you know, and... Um, my Zen place is uh, <laughs> <laughs> the prairie. But speaking of Zen, I'm reading this really great book by Sherry Huber called I Don't Want to, I Don't Feel Like It. <laughs> oh, I like that. You know, I've, I've actually, I, I need to read that. You know why? Because we've had these really cool conversations on this show and, and in my professional work on television radio. I've had to learn to say that. And it took me driving alone through Death Valley after a television shoot that we had in Nevada in a rental car after the crew left and it was just me with the car and I had time and driving alone to realize, you know, being in this rental car with nobody knowing and the risk of it all and um, the liberating factor of not having people with me for it to be a great experience to drive alone through Death Valley in August of all times to drive through Death Valley. But the, the wow. riskiness of it, the uh, ad hoc nature of it and the fact that I did it uh, relying on my sensibilities and whatever energies were surrounding me, divine, planet, earth, mother nature, guiding me. It was really amazing. It came out of that saying, got to say that sometimes because, you know, if you're running to put everybody else's fires out, you may have a few yourself that need to be taken care of as well, right? And Jim, you're, you're so beautifully connected. Um, and I, I love the quote by Moss Hart, the, the great playwright. Uh, every time I've succeeded, it's been for different reasons. But every time I've failed, it's been for the same reason. I said yes when I meant no. Uh, yes. <laughs> you ever, I'm, I'm, you've probably had this experience, we've all probably had this experience where you've said yes too often. Sure. And it, 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 there's a backlog. Yep. You can't, you know, duck out of things or you can't bow out of things, you know, in your head, you're saying, I gotta, I have to do this. Yeah. And, um, you'll, it, it, your immune system goes down, your, you know, your, uh, you get to, I get depressed if that happens. Patience level uh, wanes. Yes. And, you know, because I'm, I'm holding resentment toward myself. And that's never, oh, that never works out. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. It comes back, right? You can stuff yeah. it down, but it can come back. It's like hold, holding a beach ball underwater with your pinky. You know, it's like, I, <laughs> I'll hold this up. 
I think we tried that as kids. It didn't work. Right. And then I think my sister and friends, they tried to go to the bottom of our swimming pool and you cross your legs in a, and you sit and they tried to have like a tea party yeah. at the bottom of the pool. Did you do all that? That's what they did. And they said, hey, Jim or Jimmy, come down to the bottom of the pool. We're having. <laughs> How many siblings do you have, Jim? My sister. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. My sister. She's married with children. And uh we come from a big family on both sides of the family, especially on my mother's side. My mother's the youngest of 16. Holy yeah. mackerel. Yeah, yeah. I'm the seventh she, of so she, she, knows, she knows what a big family is. And <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Christine, yeah, they, North Carolina welcomes you too. She says, welcome to uh, JMS Live tonight. You're now a lovey. It's so great you could join us. And uh, so happy and, to be here. The power of positive. Yes. The power of the positive. No, no. that's yeah. the first time I actually heard it say it that way. The positive. No. And that's the thing. I would agree. <laughs> Jen Barry in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, she did the underwater tea party. <laughs> that, that's a definite, you know, uh, especially above ground pools. <laughs> they did that a lot. Um, you know, the power of the positive. No, let's go back to that. That's cool. And I like that. That's really true. Isn't it? Um, when I do say, you know, I, I really can't right now, or I, you know, have to hold off for a second, or I'll be there in a minute or whatever, I still do it in a way where it isn't no, or I said no, it's, I'm always thinking of the delivery, the presentation, how, when I do say that I'm not going to be able to jump at your will to get that done immediately, unless something is on fire or somebody's ill or something which has happened and I've been there in those cases too, but uh, I'm always still trying to word it in the most positive way um, that doesn't create any sort of like, you know, friction or, or whatever. But then sometimes you do have to say, look, you know, I, I have something over here. I got to get this done first. I really, I do. And it comes back to that oxygen mask on your face first. And that took a long time. I always, even when I'm on a plane still, which I haven't been on in a year, but we'll be going on them soon eventually. Um, I still have that little bit of a nudge when I hear them say, um, put the oxygen mask on yourself first, then help the person next to you. Because I'm my, just my being is to help thy fellow man help thy fellow woman, help thy fellow child, whatever sitting next to me, help them first. Then, you know what I mean? Offer the, uh, offer the cake to them first, then have your slice. Even if it's your birthday, offer the others first, then take your slice. And I'll even do that. You know, when they slice the cake now, okay, you get the first slice. No, no, no. You guys have, take yours. I'll, I'll wait. I'll have mine. No, no, no. And the, the family will be like, Jim, no, take your slice. It's your birthday. I'm like, no, no, no. I want to make sure you have yours and you have yours. And, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm communal. I'm a presenter of uh, feelings and aura and uh, scenarios. I like to create feelings. I like to create scenes. Um, I like to be in a movie theater and we're all watching the same movie. We all feel the same thing at the same time. Very communal. So making sure everybody else has their slice of cake. I'll have mine. There's plenty of time. But then they'll be like, no, no, no. Have your slice of cake. It's your day. We'll have our slices on our day. <laughs> yes. And and Jim, tell me, um, where do you think that comes from? The And your uh, seeming... Uh, um, your energy level is so high. Does resist when resistance comes up? When you you think, oh, I'm tired, or oh, because, uh, honey, it, you do more before noon than I do all month. I'm thinking. <laughs> so when the voice and past of, midnight. <laughs> yes. So, uh, do, do you ever think, uh, yeah, I just can't do this, or I've got to dial this back, or are others in your life ever saying, you know, this might be in the. Oh. All none the of, time. None of business uh, file, but um, when they say, uh, "Look, you know, I need, I need this, and I need that," and you, when you're pulled in every direction, what seems to be the what's your go-to? Uh, 
So when I'm pulled in every direction, usually then um, what I'll do is I will prioritize and I'll say, look, you know, I'm not going to be able to do the other 75 things for this one, that one, this one, that one, until I get that other thing that is melting in front of me. So I will, and you know what's happened is when I came out of Death Valley after driving there alone, it was very liberating because there was this, uh, this, and we will be having music folks and all kinds of stuff. We're just getting into a really good conversation. Feel free to chime in everybody, a little positive. You guys were saying you're not, some of you are not feeling so good. So hopefully this conversation will uh, put smiles on your face too. Um, when I drove alone through Death Valley, uh, tighten up the story a little bit. It was a situation where the shoot had ended. It was a TV shoot and it we, the car kept taking me to the entrance. For some reason, that car, every time I drove it, looking through the scenic area of Pahrump, Nevada, this town, it kept taking me to the entrance of Death Valley. Wow. And it was just this, it's not an amusement park entrance with cotton candy. It's just a sign with an arrow, Death Valley. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, well, I was never fond of death to begin with. So uh, what am I doing here at the entrance of Death Valley? And you see it was August, it's summer, you see the road, the road is like, just like it is in the movies. It's narrow, it goes away, it disappears and you see the humidity sort of over it. It's dusty and like it goes on. So something, some energy, whatever it might have been, right time, right place sort of pushed me in uh, with his rental car. Nobody know, knew I was going into Death Valley. Uh, the shoot had ended. We said our goodbyes. The camera crew went back to Los Angeles. I still had a day and a half left before my flight came back east. And I like to explore areas. And I was never in Pahrump, Nevada before. So I like to look at the vistas and take pictures. And I'm very visual. So driving around. And then uh, every turn I take, I'm at this entrance of this Death Valley. Take the car in. I'm like, what am I doing? Nobody knows. I don't know anything about this car. I don't have all the water and charged cell phones. There isn't somebody else in the car like you're supposed to have. I don't have any of that stuff. Nobody on earth knows I'm going alone into Death Valley in this rental car in August, you know, uh, sort of midday. So I go in and as I've mentioned on this show a couple of times, I felt extreme guilt, immediate guilt. And that guilt I've felt before on other occasions. And that guilt was very familiar. The guilt was um, that I wasn't sharing this with loved ones and friends, that I had placed a place like Death Valley on a sort of pedestal, like the Empire State Building, Statue of Liberty, like, you know, the Grand Canyon, here's Death Valley. So we're, I'm going in it all of a sudden, and it's visually stunning. It's raw. It's real. It's earth. It's mountains and dirt and crazy temperature swings and wild, wacky weather and all kinds of stuff with that lonely road that goes on forever, just like you think. And I'm like, what the heck am I doing here? And how, how long does this road go for? No map, wasn't following any GPS, just went. And first 10, 15 minutes, I felt this really heavy weight of guilt that I didn't have this experience happening because I like to create experiences for others, probably why I'm a host and personality. Um, there was nobody in the car at that time because I was on a TV shoot and the crew left and that was that. And uh, so I was alone in this car and it was really quite interesting because this feeling of liberation was the lift of not having the family and friends and loved ones in the car, that it was something that it was for me to experience, that it wasn't heightened or better or just because I wasn't hearing the oohs and ahs and giggling and joy that I was delivering to others in the car, that it was just me in this car experiencing this, um, that that was going to be fine. So I felt three quick energies that were pretty intense, pretty amazing. A divine mother nature, the earth. I was seeing the earth. I was seeing the stripped raw earth. I felt nature like all around me, whether it was visible or not, you know, hiding behind a bush or a mountain. I felt nature strongly there and a divine above me because I was in a scenario like the ocean is that's larger than myself and goes on and on and on forever and is really in control, not I. 
when I, the ocean is my Zen place because I live along the coast here, grew up along the coast. So the ocean is a place I go to and I have great respect for the ocean. I know it could take me out if it wanted to, but I have amazing respect for the ocean, but I also crave swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing it, being near it, uh, the feeling of it, the sand, the whole thing. Couldn't have been the ocean. Couldn't have been a beautiful forest. It couldn't have been, you know, a city with skyscrapers, which I enjoyed too. Couldn't have been any of that. It had to be stripped of our earth for me to really get it, get what this message was, which was as I was driving through, I had this opportunity given to me. Um, I could have decided to turn the car back. Uh, and that option was there to turn that car back and say, hey, you know, I'll come back one day when the loved ones and the friends are here, and then we'll experience this monumental place together. But that opportunity wasn't there. And these three energies that I was feeling swirling around me said, hey, you know, you can do that, but who knows if you're ever going to come back? When are you ever going to be back in Prompt Nevada and here in this scenario right here and right now? So you got the choice. You want to do it, do it. We're here to guide you. We could take you out too. The earth, mother nature, and the divine could say, done right now in this rental car. But if you trust in us, because you're feeling it, the energy, if you trust in us, um, see what happens. The key is the trust. Trust in yourself. Trust in that energy. So this is really uh, some funky stuff. So I'm driving through. That, I'd say within a half hour, 20 minutes, a half hour, that, that weight of the guilt lifted. And I'm like, wow, why don't I feel guilty that the loved one's family and the friends aren't in the car seeing what I'm saying? How come I'm the only one seeing this and experiencing this? I feel guilty that I'm not, that the others aren't here because who knows if they'll ever experience this. That lifted. And I ended up driving all the way through and then all the way back. And it's got a lot more elements to it, but to condense it a little bit, people will say, well, what did that do for you? You know, wow, you drove through Death Valley alone in August in a rental car with nobody knowing, no supplies, that whole thing. What did that do for you? And I said, three things. One of it was the understanding that uh, I don't always have to have friends and family in the car for it to be a spectacular experience and that it could be something where I'm gifted with this scene, this scenario, this moment now, and I couldn't call people fast enough to get here fast enough to experience this moment in time. So either run away from it or run to it and enjoy it. So I'm always running to everybody else's scenario. So this was one that was running to me that I had to sort of engage with, which was very cool. So there was that, the liberation of it, that you don't always have to have the family and friends and everybody around for it to be uh, where you're the one that's presenting this charming environment to make everybody else feel good about themselves. Second was that when I'm on the plane and they say, hey, you know, in the event of needing the oxygen, the mask is going to drop right in front of you, put it on you first before you try to help somebody else. That was part two, came out of this whole Death Valley thing. And the third was that the world is going to continue to spin on its axis, whether I rescue it or not. Um, the world will keep spinning and that will be, you know, the way it is. So when you, this ties to that question as far as when I have all these things to do and all these people that are, you know, emailing, texting, calling, Jim, we need you here. Jim, can you do this? Jim, do, 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 do. Um, I've learned to say, I'll be there. Just can't be there right this second. Can't do it this moment. Hang in there. I will be there. I got, you know, 500 other things that are there that we're tending to. Now, when that happens, sometimes people fall off the face of the earth because they're used to you being the one that's always answering the phone. That's always there. That's always responsive. That's always, I'll be right there. Oh yeah. What do you need? Okay. Yeah. I'll email you back in six seconds. Mm -hmm. And humanly, you can't always do that, especially now with all of the technology and everything that we've got, the, the earth is spinning even faster on its axis. So um, I've learned to say, you know, and I've also learned to say, if I don't necessarily agree with whatever this thing is, 
I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, that's not necessarily for me. Uh, I'm, you know, I don't know if I want to get involved in that or the plate is already so full. I'm going to have to unfortunately pass on that. I would always somehow find a way somehow putting something else off, not to pass on whatever that other thing is. Um, but you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. So that, those three energies, those three things were monumental, life-changing things that happened about two years ago. Everybody keeps telling me, write a book. We didn't even need to be in the car with you because if you are in, we the way you tell this story, Jim, it's as if you had us in the car with you. And um, so, you know, a couple of people fell off the earth who were people who wanted you to, you know, hold their hand constantly. But the energy that it's brought in and all of these other people that are like, oh, my God, I love this energy. I love what you're putting out there. I like this aura. I like this. It's always been there. I've always shared it. But coming out of that story, it's been doubled. It's been heightened. It's maybe a little bit uh, more raw than polished. You know, working in this industry, everything's more polished and quaffed and uh, delivered. Uh, so maybe now it's a little bit, it's the same, but maybe a little bit more, you know, less of that super fine to shine polish still there, but underneath that, you know, the other is uh, there and available as well. So uh, some mon monumental things happen that have been very cool. And there've been times when I've been almost teased to go back and rewind to before going into Death Valley. And I'm like, nope, I'm sticking to my guns. No, nope, this is what I have to do. This is what we got to do. This is how it has to be done. And sticking to it and saying that out loud. And there's been a, you know, people that know me personally, like, good for you. That's great. We told you this, like, you know, 10 years ago, <laughs> 15 years ago. And then I'll say, well, why didn't this happen when I was like 19 or 25 or whatever? Yeah. And then you yeah. would have been you wouldn't have been ready. You, you, you would have shunned it. You wouldn't have been ready. You might not have noticed it. And it was a gift and you had to live life. And then it was presented and you could have walked away from it, but you didn't. And how cool it was to have had that gift that I've been told multiple times, many people don't get. And the other part of that question is a long answer to your question, but, um, a number of people who have t are experts in all these different areas who uh, some I've interviewed, some I've done co-hosting of television network shows with through the years who are into all this kind of stuff. They're like, Jim, let me tell you something. And these people have said this without knowing the other one has said it and not even in the same room, totally different time is when they've said this. Uh, they said, you operate from a higher consciousness, you hear things, see things, visualize things, feel things pretty strongly. Um, high level empath, empathetic to the needs and concerns of others in an automatic way, not in a, in a way where all of a sudden empathy is now the new vogue in vogue thing. Oh, let's celebrate empathy. You were always sort of like that. It's just that now people are hopping on that train that you've always been on and intuitive. Uh, they keep saying those three things um, out of uh, everything that they say lately. Okay. <laughs> Well, my Zen place, someone asked, um, would have to be in music. Uh, I yes. usually go to music. Um, I'd be happy to do a, a song that sort of came to me in a Zen way. I started writing it in um, around 1996 or 97 and finished it with my friend Janice Stanfield in 2001. Did, so, you, did you ever have a Death Valley story yourself? You know, um, I would have to say that my one of my my biggest um, Death Valley moments was uh, seeing the Beatles, you know, on the Ed Sullivan Show, and just thinking, "What is that? What you know that sound?" I was I was about nine or ten, and um, the nuns were kind of trying to recruit me. Of course, you know, I went to Catholic school. Um, and I saw the Beatles and I was completely pulled in. I begged my parents daily for a guitar. 
guitar, 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 I want a guitar. And I learned how to play and I, I started writing songs with my best friend, Sid Barthel, who lived across the street. And um, just uh, loved the music. Uh, a year later, I, after I got my guitar for that Christmas, um, my father and sister passed away uh, three months, within three months of each other. My father from a stroke and my sister from um, a car accident. Um, and yeah. it was the music that I just did a swan dive into and um, really healed me and sort of set my foot to the path. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is for um, all those who've had kind of a, um, oh gosh, a, a hard day. Um, someone, I think it was Christine who said, uh, oh, she really needed a lift. So this yeah. is Several, Maureen, Kathleen, Juanita, Christine, I think a good deal of them today, yeah. So this is uh, for you. All you loveities. All the loveities. You will do amazing things with the choice each new day brings. And with every breath you take, bless the progress that you make. The reason you live is found in every gift you give. Love your life, love your dreams, you will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing, you will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing. Things. All the places you will go and the people you will know. Don't worry when or where or how. You don't have to know right now. You're on the right track. No need to look ahead or back. Just enjoy what this day brings. You will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing. You will do amazing things. You don't have to work it out. Just stay in the here and now. Let your mind rest for a little while. Sometimes deepest answers come when you're out there having fun. So close your eyes and take a breath and smile. Amazing. Amazing, you will do amazing things. Amazing, you're here to do amazing things. That was amazing. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful song, beautifully sung. Your voice is a gift uh, from above. Do you ever feel like you are a uh, conduit? The energy flows through you and out? That's the biggest compliment you could give me. Uh, I, actually, one of the lines in my song, Beetle Love, is um, uh, when I was 10 years old, the beetle saved my life right there in my living room that fateful winter night as I watched in rapt attention to this new and wondrous art. 
They performed their psychic surgery, linking my vocal cords and heart. Mm, that is so beautiful. So that is... The divine intersection between our thinking and our feeling. Absolutely right. Yes. Yeah. Kathleen says, lovely. She's in New York City. Juanita in South Africa says, what a beautiful song. Thank you, Megan. Denise is with us. She says, beautiful song. And you have a beautiful voice, Thank Megan. You. And uh, Merlin in Ontario, Canada says, beautifully sang. And Christine Clifton in North Carolina, gorgeous mm -hmm. song. So heartfelt, Megan. Jennifer Barry in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania says, thank you, Megan. Jen is Zen. Jim's mm -hmm. Ocean Zen. <laughs> And uh, more coming in here. Maureen had mentioned that she works in healthcare in Arizona, and she had said, uh, yes. "Your beautiful song is the best medicine I could imagine today, Megan. My eyes are leaking. <laughs> thank you so very much." Thank you, That's Amy says, "Thank you, Megan. So needed this. I have a job interview tomorrow. Oh, so yes. beautiful. Yes, and thank you, Jen. Yes. I appreciate that." And Anne says, "So beautiful." Uh, Megan and in Southern California and Kathleen as well with smiles. And uh, Denise says, uh, hi, Jim and Megan Mutasek soothes the soul. It really, really does. Um, so for you uh, early on, was music um, something as a child that tickled your fancy as well? Uh, tell us about some of the inspirations in your life that sort of fostered this real keen interest in, in the arts and entertainment and um, sharing all of this levity with the rest of the world. Thank you. Well, you know, the first time I remember hearing a song or music, I was five and I was in the basement in my tap shoes because I was rehearsing for um, the St. Thomas the Apostle Christmas pageant where I would sing All I Want for Christmas with My Two Front Teeth because I was, uh, from the time I can remember, I was singing and dancing. And I heard this coming out of the TV that was on. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha, it's the Woody Woodpecker Show. And I just remember like thinking, what is that? Much like when I saw the Beatles, it's like, what? is that I must go there, I must do that, I must be a part of that. And it was kind of odd because he was, uh, Woody Woodpecker was kind of annoying to me, but yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he was funny and his uh, his animator creator was paying attention to him. And you know, I'm the seventh of nine kids. Um, I just took what got me attention and parlayed it right into a career. Yeah. I remember then, um, just making up skits and singing with Broadway albums and making up the choreography and always singing. And my mom was a singer um, and um, and us kids were, you know, we kids were, were really encouraged to be creative and expressive. And it was a little competitive, you know, um, but for the most part, um, I was born to, you know, I love the Hindu uh, teaching that we choose our parents before we get here. Um, many times I would think, are you kidding? I chose those knuckleheads? No. <laughs> um, but looking back, it's perfect. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, they, were, uh, they were a couple of Geminis yeah. and uh, just wildly creative, wildly uh, playful. There was a lot of play and um, yeah. just curious about the arts and loving, just loving the feeling that singing gave me. Um, and then, you know, I won a radio contest, the WLS in Chicago, big break radio contest. When yes, I was, WLS. <laughs> yes, world's largest station. Um, and uh, I won first prize in this contest. Wow. Uh, against like bands and others. Yeah. 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 Uh, one of the prizes was a recording contract with Mercury Records. I uh, made a couple 45s. Uh, you young bloods will have to Google what those were. Uh, <laughs> um, but Mercury released me instead of the record. Um, and, but it connected me with right. a production company and they were moving their company to California and asked me if I'd like to go along. I was 17. I said, sure. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Wow. 17. So what did the family think? You know, 17 moving on up and out, moving my, on up to the my, east side. <laughs> my, my mom was a pretty progressive uh, mom, needless to say. And she yeah. said, well, you go. And if it doesn't work out, you know, you can come home. And I'm like, yeah. okay, bye. That's great. So the love and the support. Right. Exactly. And I had always heard that too, uh, that uh, your bedroom will always be here for you. You know, the childhood bedroom will always be here yeah. for you, yeah. <laughs> right. which is comforting. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Gosh, I, think, I think our childhoods, you know, everybody's childhood is fraught with some, some sadness, some trauma, some, you know, uh, you know, character building, muscle building. Um, and now looking back and I think especially coming through COVID, there's yeah. been so much, I think, looking back and uh, really presencing what's important. Yeah. We want to do. I don't know about you, Jim, but when in the beginning, I guidance was totally just to stop. Just mm -hmm. yes. Stop. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I had um, a 50 year career in the performing arts. And you know what? I was grateful that it was time to stop. Yeah. You know, and I had moved, I had started to move into my new uh, coaching career just when, when that happened, everything stopped. My yeah. new, my new calling to, uh, to coach creatives and uh, people um, getting uh, clean and sober um, and uh, helping, helping in, uh, in that realm. Um, and I just thought, you know, I'm going to follow guidance that just says, do nothing right now don't don't scramble don't push to the head of the line to get you know online and create a new new online business and get clients and um because i realized I, for as long as i can remember yes i loved to sing but i also pushed the river so often mm -hmm. and really needed to just kind of step back hit the reset button reevaluate what do I want to do? And so I, I um, in June in Chicago, we had a little window where COVID was looked like it was, you know, dying down. And because I went to work so early in life, I, I really didn't get enough time with my siblings. I mean, I love my siblings. And um, uh, so I thought, you know, I think I'm just going to go up to Minnesota and uh, spend some time with my sister Erin and her horses. She got a couple of magnificent horses and her Beautiful. husband had a wonderful poodle named Luna, Luna the Wonder Dog. <laughs> and you know what? It will be, I, I've been here a year next month. I, it's just like astonishing. I thought, I'll go up, I'll, I'll get a job, I'll, you know, I'll play, I'll go to, I'll, I'll, you know, learn about horses and riding and yeah. And here we are a year later and s the world is different. The world is different. You know, you, you, it's funny that you said that thing about stop and pause. Cause that's exactly what I said. I think when we first launched this show, which I have mentioned is born out of my professional work as a television and radio and stage on air person. And uh, just threw on the television lights, we built the home studio, and here we are, 400 shows one year later. Um, it, I think what happened last year was uh, those three energies I talked about at Death Valley, they had a meeting of the minds. The divine, mother nature, and the earth said, knock it off, stop, stop, everybody stop. The, the violence, the divisiveness, the, the yelling and screaming and, and the shootings and just all this stuff that you saw swirling around, the, the road rage, the everybody kept saying, where's the friendly people? What happened to empathy? What happened to kindness? What happened to please and thank you? I mean, everybody was saying that. I don't know how many people were acting upon it, but everybody was saying what's going on. And I think that some things larger than us had to come into play and throw a few things our way at the start of a new decade, like 2020, which is usually hopeful, which is usually like, oh, we're gonna coast right in. It's the start of a new decade. Everything's gonna be fantastic. So it was selected to have it be 2020. And, um, you know, uh, of course there's other reasons why things happen, but just in terms of looking at it from this sort of uh, idealistic way, perhaps maybe that 
the energies came together and they said, look, this isn't going to really uh, affect the animals directly. Um, the ocean, the sun, everything else will still exist and swirl and, and go on, but it will affect the humans um, because they're really, they're, you know, we gave them life. We gave them the richness of the planet. We gave them all of this opportunity and things are going awry and it's not the way we had hoped. So let's do a pandemic. Let's do an economic shutdown. Let's do civil unrest. Let's do political craziness. Let's throw everything all at once in the same year. So if it, somebody says, well, that's not affecting me, this will. Well, if that doesn't, this other thing will affect you. So everybody's been touched by all these major things yeah. uh, and we've had to work through it. And uh, again, I say that I've said it tons of times in the show and keep repeating that I hope that we sort of rise from whatever ashes there are, um, more empathetic, more compassionate. Um, that doesn't mean you know that everything is Pollyanna and idealistic, but then again, what's wrong with a little of that? You know what I mean? The, the polar opposite of that's not so hot, hot and the earth doesn't necessarily like it when we're at each other's throats all the time. So I really th I'm hoping that uh, there's been teachable moments, lessons learned, not everybody's going to you know, go that route and everybody can do what they need to do in their own lives. Perfectly fine. But I just know that I am going to keep moving forward to empower and inspire and do whatever I can. Um, even during it, we were delivering food to people that needed food and supplies, whatever we could. Uh, that's just something that I hope, you know, we, we get more unified. I'm not an extreme anyway. Like I said, I'm Libra for balance and harmony. So I take, wow. Wow. I take this extremes and I try to find that middle ground for all of us just so we can move forward and survive and, and yeah. grow. I also love that in the, the Death Valley experience, it was the Trinity, the triune nature, you know, the divine mother earth and nature, you know, uh, body, mind and spirit you know, and how um, it was so integrated for you. It was yeah. clearly, you know, and, and uh, before before the show, um, Love It Ease, I was saying to Jim how much I admire him uh, just for, for taking action that this is so difficult to do. It's, it's so difficult to get your music on YouTube and get your videos posted and get, you know, um, forget getting it monetized unless you have many, many, many followers and, you know, and all of that. And Jim, what I, what I love is that um, because of your generosity, you are able to receive help from others, you know, and because it, this is, Certainly nothing you could do on your own. I mean, you're the main guy, but this is nothing you could do um, alone. We need each other to, you know, and need each other. Everybody's got a job. Uh, people are helping you um, and you're taking in the love. That is, I once had a really terrific therapist. He was crazy, but he was really smart. And <laughs> Somehow it works that way, doesn't it? <laughs> really, really smart guy. And he would say, you know, the hardest thing you'll ever do is taking in the love. Because, you know, human nature is that, that voice that's always going to be yammering. It's always going to be saying, you know, what do you think you are? Or what are you doing? Or you should quit. Or <laughs> that voice is always... We can find ways to turn it down, you know, by yeah. going to our Zen place, but it's always going to be, it's always going to be there. So I think it's really fantastic that you have just continued to just do the next right thing, man. Just do the next right thing. Okay, we're doing this. Okay, I'm doing the show. And here it is a year later. So I got to give huge props to you and your staff and the, you know, the love of these. And because it, this is how much it takes. It takes so much. And I think this is the exact vibration that is going to really help us get into the new world. Who do, who do I want to be in the new world? I want to be, I want to be a love -y. Yeah. Right. And it's funny because uh, that word, as I've said, I, I kept saying, oh, I accidentally said that in the summer last year, light love and levity and said levity. 
And everybody has said, Jim, 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 stop saying it was an accident. It wasn't an accident. It was supposed to happen, like Death Valley. It right. was supposed, you are supposed to say that because it reflects the energy, it reflects what's going on, it reflects, you know, everything happening here. And it was, it wasn't just a Freudian slip, it was meant to be. So now I don't even say, it, I accidentally said levity because everybody embraced it. Everybody, you know, Lovity Squad, Lovity Hall, you're Mr. Lovity. I mean, all of these things that have happened around that word have been powerful and have amazed me too. Right. right. Yeah. Re really amazed me. There are no accidents. There, right. Yeah. Right. right. And if yeah. there are, they're only happy ones, like Bob Ross used to say. Yeah. <laughs> Good old, and now look at that. Look how people are watching him on uh, YouTube and Netflix, all of his uh, re-airs. Uh, we used to raise a lot of money on public television uh, supporting his show, Bob Ross and Sesame Street and all the public television shows. We still do, actually, but uh, with Bob Ross. And now everybody's sort of in tune. He's become like a cultural icon. We always knew about him, but his soothing ways, his comfort. Look at, look at the... Um, this resurgence of Mr. Rogers oh, and people yeah. craving uh, nostalgia and the comfort and ease that they had from their childhood or whatever uh, in a time when sometimes it seems like the world is spinning out of control around you and they're going to uh, classic movies and, and older music and uh, sitcoms and all these different things and comfort foods, the bacon, the bread and all the things people have been doing, which is kind of cool to see, right? Oh my gosh. And Kindness. I saw a bumper sticker uh, a couple weeks ago on a car um, that said, humankind, be both. Humankind. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kindness. And, and my dad had an expression. He had an expression for everything. You know, the Irish, they have an expression. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And usually humorous, usually, too. Yeah. He would say, manners will take you where money will not. Yes. Right. Yes. This is another way of saying kindness. You know, just just kindness. Just you know, uh, yeah. Just being kind doesn't cost anything. And uh, my father says, uh, whenever anybody does say something kind and generous to you, as well, please ask them to put that in writing and address <laughs> it. Man management. <laughs> yes. Yes, right. A <laughs> uh, couple of comments coming in here. Uh, Denise says, Jim's show has been something to look forward to during um, the many new friends also made on certain during their uncertain times. Many new friends also made because of the show. Um, and says, love this lovely community and smiles from Amy. Uh, Juanita in South Africa, Jim is taking in and spreading the love. Thank you very much, guys. You're the best. Kathleen says, uh, the show is a blessing. It's helped me so much. And that is really beautiful to say. And having folks like Megan with us just adds to that. Uh, do you have another song you want to bless us with? I do. I know our, our time boundary is coming up. You guys, I have a new song and I, it's funny. I could do a serious song, but, um, well, let's go for some levity. And, and before you do it, tell us about this very cool room you're in. You've got this fantastic mini guitar behind I you. Know. We do sort of this Edward R. Murrow uh, person to person right. thing here. So I always wanted a George Benson Ibanez, and that's what this is. And so um, I this summer I, I, I gifted myself um, – and I have a couple of my old LPs. That's another thing you're going to have to Google. Uh, when I was uh, um, 18, I uh, got a record deal with a, a company called Wooden Nickel Records, Wooden Nickel RCA, and I toured with uh, John Denver uh, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But um, I recorded four albums, and uh, so I, I found the album covers. I thought I'd put those up there. And what was it like touring with John? Just amazing. We lost him way too early. Yes, I, I will tell you this manifestation story because it's a doozy. So I uh, I ran away from home with my mother's permission when I was seventeen, and I went to California to be in the music business. And um, 
I got a record deal and uh, then they put me on tour um, uh, of little clubs. I, I recorded my first LP and they put me on tour um, to play at little clubs around the country. And, and I played a club in Denver, Colorado called Ebbets Field. I don't think it's there anymore, but a friend of ours was my sister traveled, my sister Brenna traveled with me at the time. And we were total hippies, you know, it was the seventies and we were, you know, we had a friend who was going to school in Boulder who picked us up at our hotel and drove us around Boulder and took us to Red Rocks Park. And Red Rocks Park is so beautiful. And I was uh, there on a TV shoot a year ago and it is, there's incredible. talk about energy that it's yeah. incredible there. Well, you know, at, uh, during the day, the stage is closed off. Yes. You can stand on the lip of the stage. And so I climbed up there in my cowboy boots and bell bottoms and I, and I turned around and this overwhelming feeling came over me and this wish sprang from my heart that said, oh, I would love to sing here one day. And about nine months later, I was opening for John Denver at Red Rock Park. I was, and I remember doing my set and then coming off stage and um, John going on with his guitar player and bass player. And he struck the first chord of his first song and a shooting star arced over the stage. And I thought, okay, take me now, big guy, because it, it's not going to get any better than this ever, ever. Yeah. That is incredible. And now, did you hear that ding as you were saying that? Yeah. Did that, did that not sound like a shooting star? Ex I mean. There are no answers. Hey, I, I, that's no. like, that was timed. I couldn't have even <laughs> scripted something like that. <laughs> came in, I thought I, I was so, on the same mode. No, it's per that was perfect. That was uh, so you've had uh this before you played the song, this prolific career and it seems as though you've had lots of blessing and lots of opportunities that have come your way that you've been able to seize and work with in your illustrious career. What are some of the moments in this career? First, of course, the singer, songwriter, actress that really stand out for you, for the viewers that are watching. And then after the song, I'd love to talk about the the calling and some of the other things that you're doing that are so important. But when you look at this body of work and this extraordinary career, I mean, music and theater and just all of it, um, what are some of those standout pivotal moments for you? Of course, the Mercury deal, WLS Chicago winning that, yeah. that was the beginning. What are some others that you really look back to and you're like, that was really a special uh, time in my life? Yes. Well, I wish I, uh, uh, playing um, at Carnegie Hall was certainly an incredible honor. I opened for John at Carnegie Hall and at the Greek Theater. But I remember playing at Carnegie Hall and John, uh, ask, John Denver asking uh, some friends of his to join him for the closing song to come up on stage. And one of the friends was named Noel. And I thought, Noel, who, 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 you know, I don't, I don't know who these people are. Well, Noel Stuckey is Paul Stuckey. Noel, Noel is his real name. Yes. Yeah. So we're standing there and I'm standing on stage with talk about it doesn't get better. Yeah. I'm, I'm standing on stage with John Denver, Peter, Paul and Mary, you know, um, and, and then uh, when I opened for him at the Greek Theater, Dick Gregory, the incredible uh, actor, yeah. uh, comic, was uh, was also on the bill. And Bill and Taffy Danoff, that city, were, were on the bill. Those were incredible times. But, of course, the air up there is very thin. Yes, so we yes. We say that, oh, it was all so wonderful. <laughs> um <laughs> There is always a time to come down. I, I, although it wasn't uh, as, um, as, you know, hard for me as it was for, you know, many women who, uh, you know, yeah. went through yeah. the seventies music business. Um, yeah. I, I got out um, in time, I, and and pretty pretty much intact, but still. Um, but I, I did want to present this story, and it won't sound positive, but it was. You remember the Red Rocks story? Yeah. And wow, I would love to sing here one day. That was from the heart. Um, when I was about 
29. Uh, I had been through a, a marriage um, to a wonderful guy, but it was just, you know, we, we got married way too young. And it was what I call a starter marriage. My first husband. Um, <laughs> and, and, that was a bit of the acting, folks. <laughs> <laughs> very, uh, very small bit. Yeah. Um, and I, I moved to New York, um, and, and I, I was I was pretty hard. I, yeah, I, I was yeah. pretty hard, and um, I started working for um, uh, a music for television producer, and and uh, it was just it was not uh, it was not an easy time. Uh, but I was channel surfing, and I saw um, uh, an ad for Star Search, mm. and I. Yeah, you know, I could probably, I could go on that. I could, so I manifested an audition. You know, my, my, he was my producer, manager, co-writer, and uh, boyfriend, because I like to bundle. Yeah. My <laughs> um, knew somebody at NBC and got me an audition, and I got, you know, I got in. Long story short, I got on the show, and they said, the woman you're competing against has already won like a million times. She's going to the finals. You're next. So bring two dresses because we film, you know, one right. Yeah, now. right. So I sang a beautiful song, Wake Up and Dream. And, and um, oh, and my bundle boyfriend thought it might be a good idea for me to be introduced as Megan from New York, you know. Yes. We're not, you know, who does she think she is, Cher? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I... Um, I sang my song, and and uh, T. Renee Crutcher, great singer, um, sang "Come In From The Rain." She did a, a, an amazing job. So comes time for the voting, and I go out, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm pretty cool." And Ed McMahon says, uh, "T. Renee Crutcher, four stars." And I think, "Oh, that's as many as you can get, right? Yeah, Who's right. gonna tie?" Right. Megan from New York, three and a half stars, and I think, "Okay." Don't cry, don't fall down, <laughs> don't pass up. Just turn and congratulate this person, and then hit the bricks. You know? Yes. So I did just that, and I get off the set, and I'm just about to exhale when I feel somebody tap me on the shoulder and say, um, "Megan, could you come out?" And uh, we have to refilm the ending because the camera ran out of film. So I had to learn, I had to lose twice. And uh, it was talking about, they got the stars mixed up. Oh, it was, it was, but if there are no accidents, right. if there are no mistakes, then, then the voting didn't get messed up, okay? It was a bottom for me. You know, I went back to New York. I was, I felt, I was like mortified, you sure. know, that I, lose uh, and um but that was the beginning of knowing the difference between what is from the heart and what is from the head like mm -hmm. yeah what is what is warm and what is sort of hard and and cold i didn't do anything wrong but it was time for me to learn the difference did it so make you stronger? Stuff. Yeah, you can manifest stuff. Right, um, right. After, after I moved back to Chicago and um, found myself in sacred circles of people uh, teaching me how to take life one day at a time, uh, I got better. That was, that was 1985, and my life's been, you know, and, it and, hasn't and, been perfect since then, but wow. And perfect doesn't really exist, right? It's something that's just uh, man-made created. Um, and then the acting too, yeah. tell us about uh, some of the incredible things in the acting world. You're so multi-talented, Megan. <laughs> I um, went back to Chicago and got cast in a show called Beehive, the 60s musical. Now, Jim, I cut my my teeth on yeah. girl groups of the 60s. So sure. getting be in this show was amazing. Then I got asked to go to Japan as the swing understudy, which means I was understudying the three uh, white women in the show, the three African-American women singers in the show and three white women. I went as the uh, understudy. And, uh, you know, 
Larry Gallagher, who wrote Beehive, said, Megan, I know you're a principal player in the show, but would you go to Japan on tour with us as the understudy? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I would. Yeah. And uh, I must say, I would go back to Japan tomorrow. It was just magical. I got to go on um, about three times, fell in love with the country, but the people um, yeah. were so lovely and warm and um, gosh, it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Very nice. That's your Japan story and a good one. <laughs> Pat Klein and always Pat Klein and got nominated for a Jeff Award in Chicago. That is incredible. That is fantastic. Uh, yeah, and you and you understand the blessings. You understand that it comes with uh, blood, sweat, and tears, and and tenacity, and not giving up, and and believing in yourself, even at times when maybe you didn't feel like it. Like you don't today feel like it, but mm -hmm. but you end up, and uh, maybe others around uh, lifting, helping to lift as well, which is really important, right? Oh my gosh, and just just being um, open, being open to what might be next. I wish I were a planner, Jim. I wish I could plan the way, you know, I wish I had gone to school, you know. And then I think the things that have come to me, my favorite name for God is out of the blue. The things that have come to me out of the blue have always been just remarkable. They've turned out to be something I could have never planned. Like being on the Gym Master Show live and yeah. being a and being a lovety. That, and being a lovety and and thank you to my friend um, Ralph. <laughs> Absolutely, who was just a just a lovely, lovely soul. So Absolutely you. right. Absolutely. Yeah. What is the song that you want to share for us, my friend? Wow. <laughs> I got the Is that a vocal exercise? Whoa. Oh, Warming up the chords. Oh. <laughs> um, so I got to thinking about all the things you really can't Google. And I thought, hmm, I'll bet there are a couple things you really can't Google. So this is called Answers You Can't Google. <laughs> Now I love me some Google, Siri and Alexa too. When I've got some, when I need some answers, I know what to do. I see, I say, hey Siri, what's the time? It's 7.13 p.m. Alexa, what's new? But they, I've got some questions and they don't have a clue. Like, how right is rain? How fit is a fiddle? Where exactly do I go to meet you in the middle? How pleased is punch? How tough are nails? What's gonna work when all else fails? Good questions, right? Tell me. How well does a rock sleep? How crazy is a loon? What time exactly is? I'll see you soon. How dead is a doornail? How are cucumbers so cool? And I can't be completely sure I'm nobody's fool. How right is rain? How fit is a fiddle? Where exactly do I go to meet you in the middle? How pleased is punch? How tough are nails? What's gonna work when all else fails? Maybe valid questions or just fun banter, but everybody's favorite is how happy is a camper? How right is rain? How fit is a fiddle? How drunk is that skunk? Did Whistler's mother whittle? How well does a log sleep? Is how mad is that hatter? How long will the willow weep before it starts to matter? Now you might think I'm goofy and shouldn't give a damn, but I absolutely have to know how happy is a clam. Haven't you always wondered? How right is rain? How fit is a fiddle? Where exactly do I go to meet you in the middle? How 
out of <laughs> how pleased is punch out of our nails what's gonna work when all else fails what's gonna work when all else fails that was fantastic <laughs> Clearly a new song. There were a couple of clams in there. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, but you're, you're so smooth and you somehow you worked it in. You just kept going. And that's what you got to do in life, whether you're on stage, TV, or just in life. You got to keep going. And you've been mentioning that through some of the you know things that you've been sharing as far as your experiences. And you just sailed through that. I don't know who had more fun, me, the viewers, the loveties, or you in that song. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I really uh, love yeah. it. Mary I Bishop, it. who's in Pine Island, Florida, says, what a great song, Megan. Love it. Juanita in South Africa, where it's already tomorrow. Such a cool song. Love it. And, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Amy, Amy yeah. says, this will be in my head tomorrow. It makes Absolutely. me smile. <laughs> uh, Anne in Jacksonville, Florida says, love this song. Beautiful voice. And uh, Kathleen in New York City says, that was great. Merlin in Canada says, neat song, Megan. She's right there. She's just north of you. You're in Minnesota. She's uh, uh, Ontario, right? Your, your yeah. neighbors. Yeah. Karen. Having a heat wave down here compared to what they're having up there, I'm up sure. Up there, right. It's going to be uh, here on the East Coast in the Northeast, almost 90 degrees tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. It's going to be, we're getting, in, we're getting into the high 80s uh, for the next several days. So spring is kind of funky. Spring just disappears. It goes sometimes from winter to summer these days. Karen is in beautiful Nova Scotia and Cape Breton, one of our regular lovely viewers. And she says, you have such a lovely voice, Megan. Hey. And she uh, welcomes you as well. And uh, we actually have another uh, video sent along and it's this one here. Take my advice. Tell us about this one. <laughs> it's a cool one. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I talk about this in the beginning of this video. I realized I'm wearing the same top. I guess this is the one I, I, I say. I I'm going to have some fun. You yeah. knew it. So, <laughs> That's your um, levity top. <laughs> it's my levity top. Um, so I was thinking. Remember earlier, I was talking about the voice, the voice that's always going, saying you should do this and you should do that and you shouldn't have done that. And boy, that was stupid. Um, <laughs> and and well, I talk about I, I sort of explain how this song came to me. That's fantastic. All right. We're going to share that right now, gang. Enjoy it. It's a cool song. I was listening to it early today. It is Take My Advice with Megan McDonough. Hi, I'm so happy to be with you. Listen, I just wanted to say, I'm probably not the only person on the planet who has the you should voice running in my head, it seems 24 seven. Sounds a lot like my voice, but I know it's not my voice. You probably have that voice too. Sounds a lot like your voice, but it's not. You know the one, you should do this and you should do that. And if you did this, you'd get that, you know the voice. So I thought, well, how could I get rid of that voice? And I thought, I know. I could take all those you shoulds and put them in a song and share them because, well, I'm a giver. So here you go. I want to tell you all a story, though you may not be surprised. See, I think I'm pretty smart and I think I'm rather wise. And I can run somebody's life as beautifully as mine. Save you gobs of money and buckets of time. Take my advice. I'm not using it, and I can see from here you're clearly losing it. Yes, I can tell that you're mixed up, and I'm the one to fix you up. Take my advice. I'm not using it. Here we go. You know, you should eat more vegetables and certainly more fruit. And if you lost 15 pounds or more, you might actually be cute. You should do Pilates, yoga, and cardio. Get an extra job or three and make a lot more dough. Take my advice. I'm not using it. And I can see from here you're clearly losing 
closing it. Yes, I can tell that you're mixed up and I'm the one to fix you up. Take my advice. I'm not using it. You know, you should open all your mail and pay your bills on time. Get up extra early for a mountain bike and climb. Answer every email, start an internet empire. Plant an organic garden and put on a forest fire. Take my advice, I'm not using it. And I can see from here, yep, you're losing it. I can tell you need a checkup from your chubby little neck up. Take my advice, I'm not using it. What's that you say? Your best friend has always had that job. She plays a great director and he does an awesome god. And they'd be broken hearted if you gave that gig to me. But listen, I can help them too. After all, my advice is free. really no resisting because well, I'll just keep insisting on my advice I'm not using it take my advice hell I'm not using it <laughs> that is fantastic <laughs> well, there's a, bit, a little bit of a theme going there right you know? yes uh, and you roll your R's beautifully too. I, well, <laughs> you know, I I uh, helped found a band called uh, Four Bitch and Babes, and um, gosh, some of the most talented, funny women uh, I know uh, are Christine Lavin, who's a, oh, she was a guest on our show. She's amazing too. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Uh, I met Chris in 1979 in Aspen, Colorado. Uh, I was playing a gig out there and we became fast friends. She's just an incredible, uh, funny and brilliant songwriter. And um, this was Christine Lavin, Sally Fingerette, Julie Gold has been in the Babes, a Debbie Smith, an amazing singer songwriter um, and a uh, ballroom player. Oh, if you, Google for bitch and babes and you will you will hear uh, Debbie's uh, Balram playing um, just I've had just such a great fortune of working with incredible people incredible musicians absolutely yeah absolutely and great names you've just mentioned I want to show you some of the comments coming in as well Denise says love it and <laughs> Amy love it cute turn of a phrase so much fun uh, and she's a, she's a poet. <laughs> so that's a, that's a great compliment from a, an accomplished really? poet. Yeah. Kathy Short in Cleveland, Ohio. Not too far uh, across from you. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. And uh, let's see. Uh, Jen in uh, Pennsylvania says awesome. And Juanita in South Africa. She's uh, toe tapping. <laughs> such a fun song. Kathleen in New York City. What a fun song. Maureen, who needed that pick me up today says that was absolutely fantastic uh you've got me roaring with laughter perfect and uh megan and i have certainly done our job and with a twist of our irish humor for sure really cute song from merlin in ontario canada mary bishop says uh, great song megan definitely a toe tapper jane says lovely song and uh jen barry was uh she was doing her tam tambourine, <laughs> jamming with you. <laughs> she wish she had it with her. Thanks, Jen. Got to get some tunes. <laughs> and that is really, really cool. I, I wanted to share that because that's a real uh, feel-good uh, song. It's on, it's on YouTube, so you guys can hear it again. If you like it, you can hear it again. Is your music on Amazon, Spotify, the yes, CDs, exactly. the places can go? You know, because you know Amazon. Uh, yeah. it's on Tunes, Apple Music, yeah, uh, CD Baby, uh, yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Awesome. I uh, I have something else I want to show here too that will just be a little bit of introduction to the work that you're doing now, which I think lends itself beautifully to the work you have always done. And here it is. The place you are right now 
God circled on a map for you. Hafez. Hi, I'm Megan McDonough. I'm a coach specializing in recovery and reclaiming your creative spirit. It is my passion to work with people and support them in building a new life of meaning and purpose. More than a coach, I like to think of myself as a Sherpa who knows the rough terrain of reclaiming your life and creating a new vision of health, well-being, and most of all, true connection. So if I can help in any way, please don't hesitate to contact me and reach out because, well, it's just not safe to climb alone. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jim, for playing that. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. And it's so very, very true. Absolutely. And uh, that that's a great message. And that, that uh, leads us into talking just a little bit more about this uh, calling, this, this mm -hmm. wonderful uh, thing that you've been tapping into. Um, before we talk about that, you must do a lot of voiceover work too, huh? Oh, I wish. Oh, really? You should be. I, I do a lot of it. You should be. All right, your, voice, your voice is very clear and crisp and with warmth underneath and depth to it. Thank so, yeah. Well, I have done some, but certainly I, I will talk. Right, exactly. Anybody watching right now? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If Just, you need a voiceover, that's it's right. clear yeah. and concise. That's it. Yeah. So, so tell us about tapping into this calling that probably has always been there in you, but has risen to the occasion and you're sharing it with the world. Right. Well, well thank you so much because it is, it is rather new. Um, I, um, I have always appreciated wisdom teachers. Uh, I love wisdom teachers. And, and, you know, I remember playing a gig when I was 15 and it was in this wonderful um, room they had a kind of a, a library dining room and I was in that library dining room when a book literally fell off a shelf um, onto the table where I was sitting it was The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale and I read it and I, I don't know it was just it sort of opened some curiosity for me. Um, with a name like Mary, Megan, Margaret McDonough, I'm being the seventh of nine kids, you know, it's going to come as no big surprise that, yes, I was raised Catholic. And uh, you must have some Marys and, and Kathleen's in the family, too, like I do. <laughs> Megan, Erin, Brenna, Kevin, Jim, John, Tom, Terry, yeah, Bridget. Um, but, um, you know, and I, <laughs> I wish we could. My parents were, uh, by the time I came along, I was late in life. Uh, by the time I came along, they were um, out of film and out of gas, but rarely out of Cuddy Sark. <laughs> <laughs> that, needs to be, that needs to be on like t-shirts or something or bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, so it was just, it was just, it was a cultural thing. And, um, yeah. you know, my tribe, uh, you either drink or you don't <laughs> uh, because, uh, because of an allergy, you know, an allergy. <laughs> that's the only excuse yeah. that you can't, yeah, is the allergy. Alcohol. If I, if I drink, I, I break out in a really crummy life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, and in 19, I would say 79, uh, Al-Anon was suggested to me yes, by yes. friends and moms. And um, I often say, um, I went to that meeting sort of defiantly, like, oh, sure, I'll check it out, yeah, you know. Right, right. Um, and I don't remember a lot of what was said, but I do remember how I felt when I left. Mm -hmm. And some of the buzzing in my head, some of the voice, the voice got a little quieter. And that got my attention, just like the Beatles got my attention of how I felt when uh, I heard people sharing honestly about how uh, they were powerless over someone else's drinking or someone else's drug use or someone else's, you know, um, uh, addiction. And 
that was 1979. Around the same time, I discovered um, New Thought teachings. Emmett Fox, um, Eric Butterworth, um, who taught me things like everything is created twice, first in the mind and then in the world of form. Um, so I started attending 12-step meetings and they just, oh, my life got so much better. Uh, I discovered um, New Thought churches, Unity churches and centers for spiritual living. And in 2008, I became a uh, spiritual counselor um, and a prayer practitioner, a religious science prayer practitioner of prayer. So, so much healing, not in my own life, but in the lives of others around me that I could help through affirmative prayer coaching. And I thought, you know, this feels so, this feels as right to me as the music. And so now I find myself coaching other musicians, um, people, because one thing, and I often say this, um, addiction and alcoholism will really hollow you out or someone else's addiction will really sort of hollow you out. And the first thing it takes, I think, is your creativity, your connection to spirit and your through creativity. And I thought, if I can help people regain and reclaim that part of themselves and find their voice again, because I, I, at my bottom, um, I was living in New York City, and at my bottom, I knew I was in trouble because I didn't want to sing and nothing was funny. Mm -hmm. I thought, uh oh. Yeah. So um, I got a lot of help. Yeah. Yeah. And so now it's my, it's my passion to help others. Yeah. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, because when you do help others, you're being helped as well. And, uh, you know, it, it all ties together, doesn't it? I mean, the music, the performance, that lightens the load for people. It makes people feel good. Music is therapy. It's healing. Uh, this is all sort of a sprinkling of the essence of who Megan really has always been and uh, continues to be as a person inhabiting this earth amongst all of us. You're a, a light, a spirit, a somebody who has gifts and talents, but wants to use them in a way that isn't just, just for the entertaining value. You want to leave an impact. You want to lift people up. You want to make them feel really good about the day, about their life, about looking forward to tomorrow, because on many occasions you've had to do that yourself, which is what makes you so relatable, which is a beautiful thing. And we all have to do that from time to time. And, uh, and that is really, I mean, you've reached a certain point where it's, uh, quite exquisite, isn't it? Wow. And Jim, you, you know, yourself, um, the shared experience, the generosity and the, and the calling that, that you have, uh, and everything that led up to your anniversary show, to, you know, all of this has led. And if you look back, you, you couldn't have planned any of it really, you know? I mean, we can we can have a plan, just we can't have, we can plan plans, not outcomes. Right, right. We're having sort of a outline of what we'd like to see happen. And I love the affirmation, this or something better. Yes. This or something better. And, if this, if this is, you know, where I'm supposed to go, where would, I love uh, the Miriam Williamson questions. Um, uh, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? That's right. profound, you know, to, because I, I say this a lot. I've had enough stage time, you know, I, I, I've had 50 years of my own stage time. M my my goal now is, or my passion now is to get others to places and get recording sessions and, and you know, to, to gigs or, or just to, to the mat. <laughs> of <meditation. laughs> I like to just come to, right, just start the car or just pick up right. the phone or, 
Exactly. And that's really what it's about. Um, you, you understand, it's an understanding also of the human condition, isn't it? You, you understand, uh, do you ever feel like sometimes you have a third eye in a good way? I, I think in a good way, every now and then I'll get like a, wow, you know? Um, yeah. And that's, that's a great feeling, but, the, but it's like, Jim, it's kind of like looking at a constellation that you can't look at directly because if you do, you really don't see it. But if you just look to the left or the right of it, then you see it, then it's brighter. Right. I sort of have to do that because as soon as I bring awareness to it, or it's kind of like star search. Yeah. Yeah. I had it all planned out. It didn't go the way I planned. <laughs> Man plans the God's laugh. You know, if you want to see the gods laugh, tell them your plans. Tell them your plan. Uh, Jane yeah. says, if I have a bad day, I always listen to music, favorite music. Uh, she likes Celtic Thunder. She's been addicted to them as well. Every day the music helps her. Um, and I love this, this or something better, which is what you were saying earlier. That's exactly. Amy Ann says. Uh, you, you're, That's my friend Ann Pogue. So hey, many Jim, so many of my friends are now um, uh, are, are now coming here, and they're they're lovities. They are now loving. You're a lovity. Oh, lovity. And would be an amazing lovity. She is a lovity of life. That one. I love that. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate that, uh, Anne. And she goes, uh, yeah, love you, Meg Annie. That's fantastic. Welcome to the show. And hopefully you'll join us again uh, as well. You are believable and truthful. And I totally see you as a life coach. Your positivity shows through. And and if that's not good enough, look at this. Whoa, you are truly heaven Thank sent. You. <laughs> you are too. And Merlin says when she's having a tough day, she listens to old rock and roll too. And I and listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire. I can't oh, yeah. Putting on Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's my go-to. Thank you. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Uh, I love all of that stuff, too. Um, do you have one more song you want to tickle us with? Uh, uh, something there that uh, comes to mind, or whatever you're feeling, whatever the vibe is for you? Well, this may sound... Um, well, it just comes to mind, so I'm going to take a chance. This is called The Tree. I see pictures of my parents with lots of dark hair. Might as well be me sitting there. Their own stormy childhoods were something to fear. You will know the tree by the fruit it bears. And I look at my siblings, all older than me, except for dear Erin, the last fruit on the tree. And I know we're connected, but just how and where you will know the tree by the fruit it bears. So blood runs deep, and it sometimes runs cold when the heart seems to keep all the things it spent. Told and spends hours and hours mending the tear. The moths of the past quietly left there. Now I look at my own child with fear, never wanting to cause so much as a tear. And I'll tell him, look back, but son, 
Try not to stay. You will know the tree by the fruit it bears. By the fruit it bears. By the fruit it bears. That is absolutely beautiful. Really, really bravo. What a beautiful song that is too, huh? Thank you. I wrote it. You know, you can let your parents off the hook for a lot of stuff once you have a child. <laughs> I discovered. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know how they did it. You know, I come from nine and, and uh, I had just one. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You know, my mother came from 16. <laughs> Look at the, the great, uh, and, and only 20 years difference between the oldest Gertrude and my mother. So 16, only 20 year span. Oh my gosh. Yes. Wow. That, and uh, yes, we, we were very uh, spread out. Um, my parents got married during the depression. My mom had twins when she was like 18 or 19 and then my brother Tom, and then 16 years, she wasn't getting pregnant. She had a, an operation. She had six more kids. And so, I mean, the-, the Well, the, they didn't have Netflix back then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. That's not a lot of options for the entertainment, but <laughs> right. not, not like today. Um, I want to just show you some of the beautiful things that are coming in. Jane says, you have a great voice, uh, Megan. And of course, our mutual dear friend Ralph is here. And he says, gorgeous, Hello. Megan as well. And Jane also says, you have a great voice, strong voice. She added that in, which is beautiful. Uh, Maureen in Arizona, whose day has been totally lifted by our show today in your presence. Megan, I could listen to you for hours. You sing so sweetly. Spotify, Amazon, iTunes. You can listen to her for hours. Uh, really? Yeah, your voice. It, it, there's a purity. There's a there's a warmth, a depth, a Thank confidence, you. and a clarity. Clarity is something that I keep. As somebody who has studied voice for years myself, I just hear this warmth, but this confident clarity. There's Thank a con you. Confident clarity in the texture, not only of your singing voice, but your speaking voice as well. Um, well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. Christine says, uh, Megan is so full of levity and positivity, all enjoyable songs with a lovely voice. You are a beautiful soul. That is Christine in North Carolina. And uh, Merlin says, uh, my brother was born an uncle to my son. So that shows you the ages. Yeah. Yes, I have a niece six months younger than I, my, my niece, Michelle. You know, My mother has a nephew, right? That is more like a brother than a nephew because they're a year apart because of that. Uh, thank you very much, Amy. I appreciate that. And uh, <laughs> Jen Berry goes, me mom and me dad broke the mold when they had me out of love. I'm a handful. LOL, blessed be. <laughs> she's, as, she's as honest as they come. Amy goes, uh, my mother was the oldest of 10. My father, the youngest of 13. And uh could you imagine the food bills today? Food prices are expensive. <laughs> and um, such a be you to full song. I love that. <laughs> Thank you very much. And anybody new watching, we would love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, give it some love, like the video, and uh, they should all subscribe to the YouTube channel, right? Right, my friend? Oh, oh my gosh. Lots of lovity there. 400 episodes of, of lovity. <laughs> Kathleen says, wonderful. Uh, in New York City, and Amy says, beautiful song and lyrics. Kathy Short, you got some claps, and yeah, Cleveland, green hearts. green hearts, claps from Cleveland. And uh, Merlin says, wow, I uh, could listen to you all night. And she's again Thank in you. Canada and South Africa. Juanita, most beautiful song, Day Made. Mary says, uh, such a beautiful song as well. And uh, Gorgeous stuff. Uh, I could listen to you for hours. You sing so sweetly. 
<laughs> so, so uh, show us the guitar before you put it away. That's a beautiful oh, I love this guitar. Um, uh, Denver, my, my son's name is Denver, which was my father's middle name. Um, D E N V I R. It's an Irish last name. Uh, uh, Denver's father, my son's father gave this to me one year, uh, for an anniversary. I call it the guitar that could go from the campfire to Carnegie hall. It's so great. I, I love it because it's nice and light and feels it's gorgeous. It's yeah. Really good and, yeah. <laughs> and, and it plays itself. <laughs> it plays itself. It's a magic guitar. Are you a multi instrumentalist? Do you play other instruments too? I play piano, uh, guitar, and thanks to Debbie Smith of the Four Bitch and Babes, I know how to play a little Bauron. Um, and I play a little bit of ukulele. Uh, and I could not get even my mind wrapped around the mandolin. I was gifted a mandolin and I love it. But uh, yeah, I leave that to Don Sternberg, who is a friend of mine in Chicago, the greatest mandolin player in the world. One of my friends plays the accordion. You don't see a lot of people playing the accordion. Yeah, she works, uh, she's one of my PBS colleagues and she has been playing the accordion for years. That's a tough one to master. That is, I remember I had an audition for um, Once, the musical Once, and my character played the accordion in the show. So I went and rented an accordion because, you know, I'm that, per I'm that actor who was yeah. Absolutely go in completely prepared. It was ridiculous. It was bigger than I am, you know, and so God love her, man. That is a talent I don't have. <laughs> now with that Irish background, never dabbled in the bagpipes, huh? That's another tough one. Well, I know, but I do play a little bit of penny whistle. Not well, I, but I do play. I was just about to say the penny whistle would, would be the other. Uh, musical family others in the family yes. uh, then and now in the musical world we all sing my brother terry is a, a musician lives in kentucky he's in about three bands he's in a society band he's wow. in a, 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 a kind of um ragtime uh band uh and he's in a pop band he plays everything my brother my brother terry is so wonderfully annoying also a libra but uh, <laughs> he, he is the type of musician who can pick something up and play it right and, away and just all of a sudden he's a master at it yeah he's, Jerry a Nicola, he's an amazing musician that is fantastic you know when you look at your life my friend you, you you're you're savoring it you're living it you're living your bliss uh you know ups downs in and outs uh and just continuing to flourish and grow and blossom through it all. You have this great spirit, this great positivity, which I, we, there's a connect, we've connected on this energy automatically. And we did even before we went live on the air and it's very, very cool. And, uh, and I can feel that. And you really are somebody who just, you've got a story, you've got a message and you're using all the gifts and talents to, to get it out there. And boy, has our world needed that? Uh, and I've rec recognized it through my work too. It's needed it more than ever now. Uh, and this whole year we've gone through has just really taught us that with these teachable moments, huh? Oh my gosh. And Jim, you're, you're an inspiration also. Thank you. Thank you for keeping our divine appointment. I like that. I like Thank that. You You've got all these phrases that I want to print out. Can we print some of this stuff out? Especially the one with the Cuddy Sark and all that. Yes, <laughs> you got some good stuff there. I don't want to guess never out of Cuddy Sark. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, what are some of those before we wrap some of those beautiful joys and blessings that do keep you inspired and moving forward in your life, Megan? Uh, I would have to say uh, prayer is my superpower. It's the first thing I go to like when I'm in trouble. Um, the serenity prayer, usually. Um, I have incredible friends. I have so much support. Um, and I actually call, you know, people when I need, when I need support. Um, <laughs> I must say, I've got an amazing therapist. I'm just saying, I love my therapist. Um, but, um, 
and my family. I love, I love my siblings. Um, and, uh, they, we've all kind of been, um, through the same, the same stuff and, um, just being with uh, the human family and, um, helping where we can just showing up, just keep showing up. Just keep showing up. And I, I think you're going to have to uh, at some point return because Amy says, please, please, please oh, come back, Megan. And Jen Barry uh, said, is that Jim? Could we have Megan back? Love her. Slancha. Slant, slant we know Thanks, that. Slantcha. And uh, Merlin says, uh, this has been an awesome conversation, Megan. Such fun. Take care. Stay safe. And uh Juanita says, uh, was a lovely conversation. Thank you, Megan, for your time and sharing your stories and beautiful music with us. And Maureen says, Megan, you certainly turned this day around. I'm in such a better mood now, and uh, you've put this day behind me. May God continue to bless you in so many ways. And Mary Bishop says, so nice to have met you, Megan. You are a true inspiration and definitely a Jim Master Show Live, lovity. You are fantastic. We will keep the porch light on for you, my friend. Let's stay connected. I hope Let's our paths cross and maybe we yeah. are in the same zip code at one, you know, East Coast, West Coast, oh, middle, yeah. whatever yeah. it is, and we break bread. That would be amazing. Let's stay in touch. And I hope that the show met whatever expectations oh, you my had. Gosh. Surpassed, Jim. Totally surpassed. My pleasure, my friend. Uh, now, uh, as oh, Kathleen says as well, uh, thanks for spending time with us, Megan. She's in uh, New York City. Um, go stretch those legs. You did good. <laughs> and this was a cool, this was really a cool episode. And uh, I wish you nothing but all the best uh, blessings and joys in life. I will toast you in my fancy martini glass with the agua. <laughs> the water. And my imaginary cup of coffee. Mm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And uh, before we go, there was somebody that was also watching who was sort of my Ed McMahon. He's with us every evening and he sends his blessings. George oh, Burns. Oh, George. <laughs> good to see you, God. <laughs> You're always going to say God when you have God on your side, right? <laughs> By whatever his, name. That's it. Exactly. That divine. All right, my friend, you stay well. This Thank was you. fantastic. Thank and you, Jim. Thank continue you. Thank to, you love. Oh, my pleasure. And you continue lighting the world as you do um, on fire and, uh, and beautifully. You're the best. Love you. Take care. Bye-bye now. Yeah. Megan McDonough, uh, absolutely amazing, right? And I'm sure you've uh, followed her career through the years. And here you got a reminder of some of the extraordinary things that uh, she has done. And Jane says, Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, all friends. Good night from Sweden, beautiful Sweden. Jane, did I tell you that uh, my mother's mother, Swedish, and my great-grandmother came from Sweden, uh, Gutenberg. She was a princess, grew up uh, in a castle, part of the royal family there in Sweden, and then they emigrated to Boston, Massachusetts. Who knows? We could be cousins, Jane. <laughs> We've got that Swedish connection. I do love Swedish meatballs. Uh, Kathleen says, thank you to you both for making me smile. Absolutely, Kathleen. This was way too short. I know, almost two hours, uh, but that's typical. We just let it ride. You know, it's freestyle, conversational, like I said, like the old school talk shows, uh, but with a modern vibe and a modern twist uh, of today. And uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us. And I hope you'll join us again. We're here every single night, just about seven days a week. And uh, love that uh, YouTube channel of ours, Jim Masters TV. We would love that. And so nice to see you here as well. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Jim and Meg. Please have Meg back. Slancha, loving you, Meg. Absolutely. And thank you for showing up. That's right. I love that for that divine appointment. I'm going to remember that too. Uh, Kathleen says, thank you both for making me smile. Uh, you are very, very welcome. And uh, Jen Barry says, Jim, how do you get rid of spell check on your phone? Seriously? <laughs> spell check can do a number uh, on it. There, there's probably a button in there somewhere, uh, Jen. Megan, thanks for being with us tonight and making our evening brighter. You're a levity with such inspirational stories and beautiful music and lyrics. Absolutely, Christine. In North Carolina, USA, Maureen says, thank you so much for this wonderful evening, Jim. I truly appreciate all the hard work you and your team do to bring us uh, this amazing entertainment. I pray 
that God continues to bless you as well. Thank you for those beautiful words, Maureen. And I'm so happy that uh, what we uh, did tonight with uh, our very special guest, Megan McDonough, um, made you smile and lifted you out of sort of that funk that you and some other levities had today. Uh, with it being a rough day for you guys, and hopefully it's turned around. What a lovely episode, Jim. Megan was great. Thank you, Juanita. I second that emotion. I second that emotion. All right, gang, you guys are the best. I just want to show you a couple of things. Tomorrow is our one-year anniversary celebration episode. We're going to have a good time. Uh, we actually hit the year anniversary, as I mentioned, a week ago, but we wanted to do something special. I wanted to make sure that we had a really fun show. And with the busyness of my you know, professional schedule and life and everything, and of course, doing these shows as often as we do them, uh, we wanted to plan something nice. So we've got a really cool show it's live, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, celebrating well over 400 episodes and one full year plus of the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. That is tomorrow night. We certainly hope you join us. It's going to be absolutely uh, quite amazing, quite amazing. And uh, boy, do we have some amazing guests uh, coming up as well. Uh, really fantastic people that are joining us. This is tomorrow, our one year celebration episode on the Gym Master Show Live with special guests and surprises and more. Uh, and I think if there's cake, I'll have the slice first. <laughs> the show has become full circle. It's become full circle. Um, then on Thursday, we have renowned uh, flutist, extraordinary Michael Mason is with us. We're looking forward to that. That's going to be a great evening of music and more. Then we have renowned and award-winning filmmaker, Stephen Blauweiss is going to be with us live from New York. That is on Friday. And then guess what? We have even more. We have award-winning actor and producer, Michael Roberts with us. A special show, 3 p.m. Eastern this Saturday, noon Pacific. Then on Saturday night, we have the incredible Irish singer, songwriter, composer, producer. She's worked with some of the legends in the music industry. Didi O'Malley is going to be here 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, Saturday night. Then on Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, we have our dear friend. I've interviewed her multiple times on PBS. We've stayed in touch for years, uh, as I have with most of the folks who've come through public television. This is Lisa Kelly, who is one of the original founding members of Celtic Woman. Yes, she makes her home in Georgia, USA with her husband and children. She has the Lisa Kelly Voice Academy, talk about inspiring young minds and others. She's with us this Sunday, again, Irish soprano. Lisa Kelly is gonna be with us live Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And uh, that is gonna be fantastic. Look for that. And guess what on, uh, that is on Sunday. And guess what on Sunday night? Legendary Anita Pointer of the Pointer Sisters going to be with us on Sunday night, this Sunday. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. So that is quite amazing, isn't it? Michael Roberts is with us 3 p.m. Eastern. That is on Saturday afternoon. That's Saturday night. Incredible. Amazing. Didi O'Malley. She's going to be amazing. We're going to look forward to that. Then Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern, Lisa Kelly, original founding member of Celtic Woman, is going to be with us. Then the lovity continues as Music legend Anita Pointer joins us live on Sunday night. That's going to be amazing. Then on Monday, we have another brilliant performer. This is Seamus Kelleher. He's an extraordinary. They call him the guitar man. Yes, he really, really is. He can play every kind of guitar there is, but he's also an incredible uh, musician, multi-talented singer. He hails from... Galway, Ireland, but he lives here in the United States and he's going to be with us coming up on Monday. And then live from Los Angeles, comedic actor and performer Stephen Foster is going to be with us. That's just some, just some of the amazing people that are going to be joining us in coming weeks here. Uh, actually, all this week and into the weekend, we have four shows this weekend. And then, of course, the following weekend is Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. 
Jane, well, Mary says, good night, all. Have a great night. Take care. Good to see you, Mary. We love when you're here. And uh, boy, these comments come and go so fast. Kathleen says, have a great night, Jim. Looking forward to your anniversary show. That's tomorrow. Good night. And if you guys still want to send in a quick video, uh, send it tonight or maybe early, early tomorrow morning, Eastern time. We'll try to squeeze it in. We have a lot of them already from guests who've made videos telling us why they love our show and the time with us. Uh, good night, Kathleen. Anne says, good night, Jim and everyone. Really looking forward to tomorrow's show. And uh, Merlin says, it's hard to have a social life when we want to be here too. Uh, watch us on your phone. <laughs> Take us with you. Introduce you to the other people in your social circle. <laughs> we are portable, <laughs> which is great about this show. With technology these days, we're portable. Uh, good to see you, Merlin. Have a good night. Good night, Jim. Wonderful show. Denise, you as well. And uh, love it, love it, love it. And Jane in Sweden says, so much fun and so much work that you do. When do you sleep? Do you know that I'm on the air tomorrow from 10 a.m. till about four with back-to-back -back shows that I have to host in my professional world. And then we're going to be here live at uh, 7 Eastern for the anniversary show. Love the fact that you're watching from uh, Sweden, Jane. And Christine in North Carolina says, Jim, thanks for the inspirational show with Megan tonight. See you all at the one-year anniversary celebration of the JMS Live tomorrow night. There'll be lots of love to you. Got it. And Jen says, hey, Lisa Kelly, love you, Slancha. She'll be here on Sunday. And thank you very much. I appreciate that uh, you're watching from Sweden. And I know it's late for you there as well. Jen says, congratulations, Jim, one-year anniversary. Thank you for all you do. I'll be there. I love you, man. Slancha, love you back. Juanita in South Africa says, good night, everyone. Looking forward to the party tomorrow night. Try and get some rest as well. Jim, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Juanita, for being here as well. And uh, <laughs> Kathleen really wants to get that longer video sent to us. She says, thanks, Jim. I've got to try that. We transfer uh, after the show so I get the longer video. We will see. It's a little Irish luck. And uh, thank you, Jane. Woohoo celebration, Amy. Thank you very much. And Kathy Short in Cleveland. Uh, thanks, Jim. I enjoyed what I heard. We'll listen to the rest in the archives. Have a good night. You as well. Kathy, thank you very much. Appreciate it. You guys are the very, very best. And uh, good stuff uh, as well, Jen. Jim, we love you. Thank you for all you do, Slancha. Thank you as well. And uh, Jim, I sent my video after many tries. That's a lovely, lovely strong. Keep uh, don't give in, keep uh, going forward, right? And Christine certainly does. Uh, sending it to the email earlier when the show started and then resend it through retransfer. Perfect. Hope the video went through. We will check that because we got a long night ahead. We will be, maybe I'll even post something on Facebook, give you guys an update at Jim Masters TV on the Facebook page and maybe in our Lovety Hall, JMS Live. Uh, it's going to be a late night working on all the production for tomorrow's show. Uh, but it's going to be a fun show. Uh, we probably will rest up, I think, after tomorrow's show. And then Memorial Day weekend. We're going to take a little time Memorial Day weekend, too. That's a time to be with family and friends and beautiful weather. It's going to be almost 90 degrees here tomorrow in the Northeast United States, here along the coast. Almost, it's going to be like 86, 87. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, Denise says, good night, Jim. Wonderful show. Thank you very much. And Jane in beautiful Sweden says, good night, everyone. And to you, Jim, sleep well. To you as well, Jane. We love having you here as one of our lovities. All right, gang. As we always say, we thank Megan, of course, McDonough. She was extraordinary tonight. Don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share the lovity. Don't forget to find your Zen place. We talked a lot. We were all over the map with the conversation tonight, and that's the best kind. Nothing scripted, freestyle, good conversation. That's what we do here with uh, great entertainment, levity, and uh, some epic, epic episodes. I can't wait to dive in that ocean soon. It's going to be almost 90 tomorrow, but the water is still too cold. But uh, we will be in it soon. We will be in it soon. Also love, of course, my work in television and radio and stage over the years. Uh, that is something that is quite zen for me as well. Love it, love it, love it. And, uh, of course, we love our friends at LMG for all of their support and love and attention. Uh, from the team there, thank you so very, very much. Lampkin Music Group, thank you. We love you and everybody that uh, loves this show. True loveities. 
Love it is abound. And um, congratulations on the one year celebration. Tip, if the video is on your phone, WhatsApp to another phone, it compresses the file. There's a tip for the day, your technology tip on the Gym Master Show Live from Juanita. Congratulations on your one year celebration. Thank you, Jane, I appreciate that. And you too as well, Kathleen. And um, Couch Zen Mountain Wiggles. <laughs> Love you, me, Jim. Slancha. All right. I know you like to uh, listen to our theme. You know, I was watching, I could see Megan in our queue, which is before we go live. And she was wiggling. A lot of the guests, when they hear our theme song to the Gym Master Show live, I usually see them in the queue as they're getting prepped before we bring them on air. And they're usually like dancing to the theme, to the wiggling, to the music, the uh, instrumental sort of vocal theme that we have for our show. This hat wants to pop off my head all night. That's why I'm like, keep pulling it forward. It wants to go, <laughs> the hair's pulling it back. Um, so get ready, Jen is in, because I know you like to wiggle to that theme music as well. If you come to Sweden sometime, pay me a visit then. I will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got to get to Sweden. And uh, on my mother's side, there's a lot of Swedish, English, Swedish, and French on mom's side, English, Irish on dad's side. Love it. He's strong. Love that, Jim. Denise, absolutely. I know we, uh, so many people have asked for the swag, the lovely shirts, mugs, t-shirts and everything. And we have been working feverishly on that. We should have it very, very soon. I know that. And also a lovely cruise we were talking about in 2022. Uh, the travel agents that I work with are in Cancun right now. So uh, as soon as they get back, we have a couple more final details and then we'll have that all announced for you guys on the show and then also at JMS Lovety Hall. If you didn't know, we have a Facebook group for this series. It's called JMS Live Lovety Hall and it's on Facebook and I invite you to hop in. A lot of the Loveties, the viewers are there and check it out. Everybody's, uh, you know, there from all different ages and uh, men, women, all different ages all around the world are in that uh, Facebook group. Uh, check it out. It's a lot of fun. And I try to chime in whenever I can as well. You can also find me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Twitch and Periscope at Gym Masters TV. And of course, we would love it if you subscribe to and the YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of the amazing content that we have. Let me know when you come here. I shall. We'll take a trip to Sweden Got to get over to Sweden and back over to Ireland and to England and so much more. Love the intro, Couch Wiggles. All right, here comes the outro music. You guys are the best. And as always, ooh, it's all the way over here. Got to stretch and reach before this hat pops off here. Don't forget to relax, love one another, love yourself, and uh, breathe. Take time for yourself. Sometimes I got to remind myself to do that as well, gang. But we've been doing that a lot lately. So relax. You guys be well, okay? It's always a blast. It's always a good time when you're here. And thanks to those of you who comment during the show, those of you who just watch, that's cool too. Those of you who watch later in the replay in the archives and you binge our episodes on YouTube at Gym Masters TV, we appreciate you and we thank you for watching as well. All of you are valuable and mean a great deal to me and uh, us here at the Gym Masters Show Live. Uh, so have a good night, gang. Thanks for being with us. Another cool episode and our anniversary, one-year anniversary celebration episode tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on the Gym Masters Show Live on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Mm -hmm.